a 15 kg solid gold statue is raised from the sea bottom. What is the tension in the hoisting cable when the statue is at rest and completely underwater? And be it at rest and completely out of the water. Next. You place a container of sea water on a scale and note the reading on the scale. You now suspend the statue in the water. How does the scale reading change? 1. It increases by 7.84 newtons. 2. It decreases by 7.84 newtons. 3. It remains the same. 4. None of these. <coughs> This question is based on the points, point force. Now, what is the point force? When an object is completely or partially immersed in a fluid, the fluid exerts an upward force on the object equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. Okay, so this is the meaning of the point force. That means when you keep an object in the fluid, it displaces the sum of the fluid. Okay, the upthrust at the buoyant force is equal to the size of the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. I explain to you with an example. It's our common experience. Suppose if you take water in a glass, this is your glass and you are taking the water in it. You take the water up to the brim. Okay, so the uh, glass is full of water. Now you want to keep a pebble in it. What happens? You are keeping the pebble like this. This is the pebble. Okay, the moment you keep the pebble in it, the water spills out. Am I right? So you measure the spilled water in a measuring jar. You collect all the spilled water in a measuring jar and then you measure it. Okay, so this gives the volume of the water. Volume of the water displaced by the pebble. Displaced by the pebble. Okay, now <clears throat> here in general, suppose if we have a solid object, okay. This is our object, any object. And it have, what are the forces acting on the object? One is the weight acting vertically downwards, Fg. And then another force is Fn. Am I right? Similarly, when the water is in the container, the, the, the water has no specific shape like the solid objects. Am I right? So the fluids whether they are water or the, any liquid or the gas or what a, whatever flows that is called fluid. Any fluid has no specific shape. They uh, take the shape of the container in which they are placed. Okay. So here also the when we keep the water in the glass, it takes the shape of the uh, glass and then the volume we can measure. So whatever the volume of the glass, that is the volume of the water. Am I right? So here what is happening when we try to put a solid object in the uh, uh, liquid, in the fluid, it needs some space. The solid has to uh, occupy some volume. Am I right? So it displaces some fluid from the container and it occupies that volume. That means the volume previously occupied by the liquid. Here I am talking about the pebble. So what the pebble is doing? The pebble is taking the volume of the water. So it is displacing some water from the glass and it is occupying the um, volume of the water. Okay, so whatever the water occupied here, the space earlier the water occupied, that space the pebble is occupying. 
Now, what are the forces acting now when you see be, before putting the pebble, the water has uh, two forces. No? One is the weight acting vertically downwards, Fg acting downwards. And another one is water layers. No, So it, it has some layers. Okay, So if we consider this as the uh, reference point, this is the reference point. And then from the reference point, if you take the upper layer, this layer, this layer of the water, and then here the um, uh, this this layer, and then you consider the lower most layer. Okay, so these two layers, if you consider here, what happens? This layer, topmost layer, occupies less force compared to the bottom most because this is the reference point. The reference point is this one. From here, we are measuring the uh, distance. Okay, so. When you consider the force, the force will be more no, the lower layer compared to the upper layer. Or if you are measuring from the down, and the, here the, you take either of the cases, either from take the reference point as the top one or the bottom one. For, um, just like that, I'm taking the topmost point as the reference point. So therefore, there is a difference in the pressures. Agree? So P is equal to H rho G, am I right? So this is the reference point. Suppose if this is the uh, H1, okay, and then this is H2, then what happens? H2 is greater than H1, no? So P is equal to H2 minus H1. So P H2 minus H1 is equal to H. So P is equal to H rho G. This is the formula, okay? So the force is, there is a difference in force. The difference in force is nothing but your upthrust or buoyant force. Okay. So here it's simple. The concept is simple. The uh, container is filled with the water. And then you want to keep the pebble into the glass. There is no space. That is why the pebble is displacing the water from the glass and then occupying the space previously occupied by the water. Okay, so we are collecting the water in a measured, uh, uh, this one, measuring jar. And then from there, directly we are finding the volume of the water displaced by the pebble. Now, when G is acting downwards, the upward force will be acting. No, just now I told you what is the upthrust. So the lower layers of the water is pushing the, um, upper layers of the water. Okay, the upper layers of the water is pushing the lower layers, and lower layers are pushing up upper layers. Okay, so therefore F G is here just like this one here F G and F N. Here you have F G and F up thrust. Okay, uh, up thrust is called uh, up thrust itself is a force. Okay, up thrust are buoyant force. I will call I will write like this up thrust are buoyant force. Okay, the uh, the buoyant force is balanced by the weight of the water. This is the weight of the water. Um, generally, we will call fluid. Now, I am giving the specific example of water. That is why I am writing the weight of water. Okay, now how to find out the weight of the water? It's a simple. We know the volume, volume of the water. We directly measuring from the uh, measuring jar. So volume of the water is known to us. And then we know density is equal to density is equal to mass by volume. Here, density is equal to mass by volume. Therefore, mass is equal to density times volume. Okay. And then if we multiply the uh, mass with the g, we get the g, uh, weight. We know no w is equal to mg. Weight is equal to mg, w is equal to mg, and then m is now we are getting the m, and density of the water is uh, known to us. That is a standard value. Okay, at so and so temperature and pressure, the density of the water is this much that we get the standard from the standard tables. Not only for water, for any material, we will get the uh, from the standard tables. So the uh, density we can easily uh, get from the standard tables if we know the volume. Then multiplying the density with volume, we get the mass. And then multiply with the G, then we get the weight of the uh, fluid. Okay, So like that, we will find out the weight of the fluid. So the weight of the fluid is equal to buoyant force. No? Simple. 
so but only thing is you should not get confused with the solid and the fluid okay here the solid object whatever may be the solid object we are keeping inside the uh, fluid kind of fluid the solid object is displacing the fluid and then occupying the space that is why we have to consider the weight of the uh, fluid displaced by the solid object okay not the we should not consider this the, the weight of the uh, of solid object if you remember this one then it is easy for you to solve this problem so here what is given to us the mass of the statue is given to us and then he is saying that the statue is in the sea sea bed okay so um, what is the volume of the uh, object mass of the object divided by density of the object am i right so mass of the object is um, 15 kilograms and then density because we i'm taking gold because the statue is made with the gold statue is made with the gold therefore density of the gold is available in the standard tables it is 19.3 times 10 to the power of 3 kilogram per cubic meter so from this i can find out the volume of the statue gold statue so it is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the power of negative 4 cubic meters okay now buoyant force what is the buoyant force buoyant force of the sea water i have to find out because the statue is in the seabed okay so uh, buoyant force of the sea water is equal to weight of the sea water am i right it just now i explained now weight of the water here weight of the water is equal to buoyant force the two forces are balancing each other so here so buoyant force of sea water is equal to weight of the sea water so the w is equal to mg we know therefore w is equal to density of the sea water times volume of the um, object we already found out the volume of the object and then with this gives the um, mass of the um, this one um, uh, sea water displaced by the object that we multiply with the 9.8 gives the weight of the sea water okay that weight of the sea water is nothing but the buoyant force okay now we found out the buoyant force you may be wondering why this lady is finding out the buoyant force because see the free body diagram what are the forces acting on the statue three forces one is weight acting downwards and then the tension acting upwards and then the buoyant force the water uh, the sea water is pushing the object upwards that is the buoyant force or the up thrust okay so now write the force equation sigma fi is equal to upward forces tension and buoyant force and downward force is weight so i am uh, adding the upward forces and subtracting the downward force up upward forces i am taking as positive downward force as the negative so uh, ft plus b minus mg is equal to zero because the object is in static equilibrium there is no acceleration at all this is simple uh, newton's law equation f net is equal to ma and then here a is equal to zero because the object is in static equilibrium and i am equating the forces to zero from this ft is equal to mg minus b and then mg you know no 15 uh, 15 is the here 147 is already given to us that means 15 into 9.8 is equal to 147 already given to us that is the weight of the statue minus buoyant force buoyant force is given to us as we already found out as 9 7.84 so 139 newtons is the uh, tension acting on the cable when the statue gold statue is inside the sea water okay that is the answer for the a bit now b bit next the statue is removed from the uh, sea sea water and then it is at rest and completely out of water see here it is at rest and completely out of water that means again the, the statue is in static equilibrium that is the meaning of that one so let me draw the free body diagram this is your statue and this is the fg okay fg is equal to 147 newtons already given to us here they gave and then other one is f tension okay now what is the answer only two forces are acting so the answer is uh, balancing each other because the object is in static equilibrium therefore f tension is equal to 
147 newtons. There is no controversy at all. But some students will ask this question. You are saying that uh, when it is in the sea water, the water is pushing the object upwards. What about the air uh, pushing the uh, this one? Actually, the uh, statue is balanced by the all from all the sides. The pressure is acting. No? Atmospheric pressure is acting in all the directions. So they will cancel out. Still, if you want to find out the buoyant force, so the buoyant force is negligible. I will show you here. So, buoyant force is equal to density of the air times volume of the statue and the gravity. Am I right? So, we know the density of the air is 1.2 approximately and then volume of the statue is 7.77 times 10 to the power of negative 4 cubic meters and then G is 9.8 and you see here the value is 9.1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 newtons. That means it is not at all significant. Even if we consider this one, actually, the, when the object is in the air, it is surrounded by the atmosphere and it is the, so totally it is surrounded by the atmosphere and then all the forces cancel out. Okay. So, but some students are asking this one. So, I just explaining this also. Okay, that one. And then the next part. You place a container of seawater on a scale and note the reading on the scale. This one. Okay. You are keeping the container on the scale with the uh, container with the seawater on a scale and you are measuring the uh, weight of the seawater. Okay. And then uh, you now suspend the statue in the water. How does the scale reading change? Now you are suspending the uh, statue in the water and then what will be the reading uh, according to him increases decreases remains the same and then none of these okay according to me it increases i give the answer when you are uh, how much he is saying so 7.84 so on uh, increases by 7.84 7.84 is the point force so that much increase there will be okay in the scale reading how i will explain to you when you are keeping the object in the uh, container uh, containing in the water container water container and then the water is not spilling out am i right so what are the forces acting on it this is the free body diagram again okay two forces are acting upwards the tension and the buoyant force upwards and then mg downwards am i right so tension initially the tension and the uh, weight will balance here when it is in the air it is this is the one and then now an additional force of buoyant force is acting upwards am i right so what is the buoyant force buoyant force we already found out 7.84 newtons so that should be balanced by the downward force am i right so we are this scale is measuring the downward force therefore obviously the scale reading will show an increase of 7.84 newtons that is the answer for the next last bit okay so here you should understand the concept of the buoyant force buoyant force is simple whenever you are keeping a solid object in a fluid or in or uh, either in the water or any liquid what happens the uh, solid object should occupy some space it has some volume it occupies some space to or to for that one what it does is it displaces the fluid and then it occupies a volume already occupied by the fluid. Okay, so when it is when it displaces that fluid, then we have to what we have to do is that uh, uh, the uh, weight of the fluid is the point force. The point force is equal to the uh, weight of the fluid displaced by the solid object. Okay, that's it. If you remember this one, then uh, it's, this, uh, once you are thorough with the buoyant force, it is very easy to do this problem. Okay. Hope this helps. Thank you. Bye-bye.